God of love, may only your words be spoken. May only your words be heard. Amen. The last stanza of the hymn we just sang before the Passion reads, Therefore, kind Jesus, since I cannot pay thee, I do adore thee and will ever pray thee. Think on thy pity and thy love unswerving, not my deserving. We are a culture obsessed with deserving. We spend a great deal of time and energy trying to determine whether or not someone deserves something coming their way, good or bad. Did that celebrity really deserve that award? Were they that good? And after what they did? Does that person sitting on the sidewalk next to the store deserve my assistance? What has anyone ever done for me? Why can't they get it together like I did? Might there be someone else in greater need? Did my loved one deserve the pain they are enduring? Did that person, so young, so kind, deserve the tragic events they endured? Our economy is based on a system of deservedness. Blessings and curses come your way based on what someone thinks you do or you do not deserve. You get a raise if you deserve one, a job even, if you deserve one. And curses work the same way. If someone dies from lung cancer and they happen to have a history of smoking, well, maybe they deserved it. If you are a woman in this culture, and you dress as you like, and you are assaulted, well, maybe you deserved it. These lists, they are long, and the guidelines for who deserves what is often left in the hands of the one doing the evaluation. This night, we are confronted with the hardwood of the cross. We venerate a cross today simply because of the time in which Jesus' execution happened. But it just as well could have been a guillotine, an electric chair, or a gun. Did Jesus deserve it? Well, it depends entirely on who you ask. Did Jesus have to keep going after and keep going on after he was warned repeatedly to stop and yet he persisted? Did he have to upset the money changers, argue with the Pharisees in the temple? Did he have to shun the social conventions of his day and break codes and rules to prove some point about God? Did he have to make himself an altar, a banquet table, a living feast for the world so as to break every expectation of who was deserving of what? Maybe he didn't. So one could argue he deserved just what he got. But, thanks be to God, that is not how God's economy works, only ours. 
You see, in God's economy, there is no deserving. There is only grace. There is only mercy. In God's economy, Jesus did not deserve to die on the cross, not because he was Jesus, but because no one deserves to die at the hands of another, ever. In God's economy, you do not deserve God's love because of anything you have said or that you have done. If there is any deserving when it comes to our relationship with God, it is because we are God's children, made in God's likeness, that we deserve what God longs to give us. Our deserving has nothing to do with us, our successes or our failures. We are deserving of God's sacrificial love for us because God makes us deserving of it. We are worthy of the abundant grace of God because God has already made us worthy of it. This bare cross hangs in our sanctuary as a symbol of our faith precisely because it was a complete and utter failure. Far from the trophy given to a deserving winner, this hangs in our sanctuary to remind us of what a great and utter failure it was when the state, colluding with religious authorities, tried to stop the banquet of love from happening. This cross reminds us of how they tried to take the table of God's love, break it, and turn it into an implement of silence and fear. And my friends, it failed. It failed. It failed because any attempt to stop God's love from being known will always, in the end, fail. Because any control we try to exert over the free-flowing grace of God will always fail. This cross is empty because it failed to keep the body of Christ from living. It failed to stop generations of people of all faiths from continuing to confront injustice and oppression, even as new methods and even newer methods were invented to try to do just that. The cross, whether this one or any other we might try to use on one another to stop the truth of God's economy of love from being known, will always fail. Yes, there will be moments in our lives when we are standing firmly in our own Good Fridays, staring at an enormous cross in our own lives, and we will wonder if it has, in fact, won the day. But Jesus promises us, Jesus shows us, that that cross, too, will fail. Because crosses always do. Jesus met the cross not because he deserved it, though that's what the powers and principalities of his day might have thought. Jesus met the cross to join us in our own crosses, to prove to us just how limited the power of the cross really is, and to defeat it with the sacrifice of his life. Cross, today you will have your moment. 
but it will be brief. It will be fleeting. And you will lose. Because you always do.